So, so I get a call after the Royce to five nine um, interview clips drop. It's Joel Ortiz. Yo, man, word to my mother, man. Word to my mother. Where you at, nigga? Where you at? I'm like, yo, who is this? Nah, nah. nah. He was annoying, like, but he was upset. I ain't say where you at. He didn't like that, you know, it was being painted a certain way. And you said something that made me be like, oh, shit, okay, yeah, nobody never asked that question. How long were y'all actually off Shady? A year and some change. A year and some I wanted change. the answer to come from it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I made the call like so it's not looking. Right. Yeah. A year and some change. A year and some change. Yeah. So what what was the hold up? Because it, this is still a thing. It's is still, it? It shouldn't be. It is. It is. It is. What's the thing? And may, maybe we can clarify the thing. Y'all what, being y'all what, what was the it, what tore this thing apart? A lot of shit. Ooh, yeah. There's levels to that answer. Um, it was torn apart before the public knew it, really. Was it? I mean, absolutely. Okay. It was. I mean, you no, talk it was. It, yeah, it absolutely was. It was. It was definitely. A lot of things happened before the public knew it. Yeah, like, a, <laughs> shit. If you listen to the album, going. you can hear what happened with all the things that were happening. We okay. didn't go into every detail because some shit don't belong out there like yeah. that. But right. it was torn apart before people really knew about it. You know what I'm saying? And we were trying, I know I was trying like a motherfucker to patch everything back together. You know what I mean? And I stopped because it started looking like I needed Slaughterhouse to people. You know what I mean? I, I, I disagree with that perception. Well, there's, there's, but that it existed. But I understand how you could feel that way. No, people I, were like, yo, oh, I, no, you're trying to put together the group because y'all need it more than they need it. No, I don't need Slaughterhouse. I was doing my thing way before I even jumped into Slaughterhouse. I never looked at it. I met this yeah. man on the cover of Double XL, the first freshman cover. That's where I met him at. Yep. We Fact. weren't on, in Slaughterhouse, but we was on the cover of the biggest magazine in the fucking world. Hip-hop right. magazine in the world at the time. Well, one of them, yeah. Yeah, no, at that at time, time, it was bigger time, than was, the source. It was one of the biggest at yeah, that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Let's just keep it real. Yeah. You, you know. feel me? Yeah, let, let's just keep it real, it was, son. It was one of them. It was let's, one of them. Okay, it was one of them, and we were there. Yeah, we were there. No, without fact, Slaughterhouse. And we belonged. You, Lupe, and, and that was And yeah. that was my second time being on the cover of Double XL. My second time. The other time with Shug and... So it's like, yo... I had a career before this, and I'll have a career after this, but it's getting painted like this is all we have, and we're trying when, desperately to when, put this together. Wouldn't that be the reasons to ignore those voices because you know better? Because you know that there's no weight in people saying that shit? There's no weight in that. Well, not everybody is. Um, and you got receipts. I it's, got hella receipts, but I'm saying. That shit don't hold no water. But ev not everybody knows my... Um, discography not everybody knows you know what i mean mm -hmm. when you when like when roy sit here and he speaks or and joe sit in his couch and he speaks some of those people listening to what they're saying hold what they're saying you know to be truths and some of those people don't know well let's dispel the the mistruths yeah i mean that was one of them like yo I didn't try to put the shit together. I was trying to do it for the culture. I felt like if we did two or three more albums, we'd be in a different conversation in the history of, in the history books. That's a fact. That's how I felt. I agree. You know what I'm saying? And I was trying to get to that end goal. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it didn't work out like that. There was a million dollars on the table. More than a million. More than a million. Yeah. What but was that was kind of my call to bluff. We've been sitting around for a year and a half off of Shady. I never wanted to leave Shady. Hmm. I never wanted See, to leave Shady. See, there's a sacrifice there. Like, we all said, you know, Joe didn't want to be on Shady anymore. Right. So, all right, cool. All right, we out, right? Right. All right, because when we get off Shady, then we on, it's on, right? We got off and nothing happened. Nothing happened. And it's like, yo, to me... Mm. We signed our contract the same day Yellow Wolf signed his. Same day. Yellow Wolf did his three albums. He out. Independent, packing buildings, doing his thing. If Slaughterhouse delivers those three albums, 
it's a whole nother ball game. Yeah, a whole nother conversation. And it don't take a while. Man, we did the first album in six days. Mm-hmm. You see six what I'm days. saying? Six days. Six days, bro. We did the first Slaughterhouse album on E1 in six days. It was an assembly line. We always said that. It was just producers coming in. We just smack it out. It's like this ain't, it's four of us. It's not tough. The workload is very light. So it doesn't make sense to not go in here, do what we do, allow the shady machine to do whatever it does for our brand, get off, start Slaughterhouse Records, start putting our little homies on. These are my dreams right. of being on the team. You know what I'm saying? And once I woke up and realized that that wasn't going to happen 10 years after we dropped our last official album, after 10 years, the fuck are we doing here? Yeah. Mm. So you call the bluff. Call the bluff. Here goes the deal. Yo, Joe, some people don't like you in that system over there, so I'm getting a deal in this system where they can't block you. You see what I'm saying? He said the, the details was never presented to him. Well, he never called me. He would never get on the phone with me. He didn't have enough respect to pick up the phone. You don't see how they, you, you don't get that, you didn't, you didn't get that energy of how they view motherfuckers. Like, you know what I'm saying? You, you sharp. You know what I'm saying? You see where the respect level was at. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's like no, I because I don't, I don't, I don't really. Okay, I'm, so there energy, might be disrespects though. that I didn't notice. No, just energies though. Right. Conversations, like things that said that that what that might make it seem like well we're up here and they're over there, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I didn't. It was a lot of condescending. It was a lot shit. of that though. And condescending here, but here's comments, the thing, though. But here's I the saw. Thing. I would see stuff like that maybe from the same people who would think that he didn't have a resume or he needed Slaughterhouse. Like, these are the voices you're not supposed to listen to. We're talking about yeah. within the group. Yeah. Within the group. Yeah. I never, I, 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 we, so when we, Joe we said about, he was bigger than that. Yes. Yeah. He meant that he was bigger than trying to tear, tear y'all down for, for any type of, of, of clout, clout or fame. And we'll put it this way. If us four right here started a group together, mm -hmm. And we was in the trenches together. I come with a deal on it, put it on the table. And Royce is calling me for Joe. Well, here's Joe's concerns. Okay, cool. Tell Joe to call me and we'll figure it out. And he don't never place the phone call. Weeks go by and you don't never pick up the phone. And then Royce calls me again. And now I'm at the point where I'm feeling like you the middleman between me and Joe. Mm. And I'm like, yo, that's enabling the disrespect. You just tell Joe, I'm not calling Crook. You call him. And then after we put out the album, we found out the reason he wouldn't pick up the phone. Why Crook's that? always coming around with deals. I ain't talking to Crook. That's disrespect. That's what he said out his own mouth. That's disrespectful. I'm not calling your manager. We stuck, I didn't start the group with your manager. I'm not calling, I'm calling you. You, you got a problem with it? What is the problem? Let's talk about it. Mm. But if you're not gonna pick up the phone, then you don't respect me. You don't respect me because I'm, I'm not gonna leave nobody hanging like, hanging like that. Anybody I respect, I'm never gonna leave them hanging like that. Especially if I'm publicly saying, yo, this is a brotherhood. What kind of brotherhood is that? It's just facts, bro. Yeah, that nasty ass narrative about a bag. That was nasty, bro. They, they know that. They know that because they, they was next to us for too long to know everybody got money. Really? That's, that was where y'all went? We did it for a bag? Why would we do that? Yeah, and it, it was like, it's just certain little things, man. And... You know, we, we just gonna speak freely on, on this topic and then, you know, we gonna dead this shit. Mm. Because really, we made that album to close the chapter. You know what I mean? And move forward. But there was things said, you know? I think on this show is when, you know, Roy said we made the most money in our lives standing next to Joe. And how can you make the most money in your life splitting it four ways? What do you think about me if you think that that was the most money that I ever made not to say that money how much is something, was it? but you thought that was the most money that I ever made? Then how, how are you it? viewing me? It wasn't much. We were splitting money. 
we were getting jerked by 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 a lot of deals that we were in. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Pre previous prior to, to to yeah, like any you know, merch deal wasn't much money. Mm -hmm. By the way, I brought a a merch deal to the table that was worth triple. They passed on it, so it, it became a pattern. Yeah. Like, oh, you don't respect me when I bring something to the table. That's what it is. You see now, what I'm saying? And what of this mysterious involvement? Well, not mysterious, but Tony. Tony is a great businessman. And I'm glad you brought up Tony because right. I want to give Tony all the flowers. He's a great businessman. He's one, of the, he's one of the hottest execs in music right now. If I ran off a list of the people that, that's, that he's working with, it's everybody on the Billboard charts. Mm. He is a great businessman. You see what I'm saying? And did he have did he have bad situations? Well, if he, had a ba if he had a bad situation, then tell me this: Why did Kino, Royce's manager, text Tony? Thank you for your involvement in the allegory. We got the Grammy nomination. This is a team win. Mm. That's what he texted him. The allegory. Mm. So it seems kind of wild to me when I see somebody saying, yo, this Tony, this Tony, that. And it's like, yo, y'all just thanked him for the, his participation. This hot fuck, trap trapper turned smack rapper. Only smack rapper that you know is smack rappers. Got bars, I can hang with the backpackers. Trap star, I don't hang with the backpackers. I'm in the hood with the work you heard. Making fiends leave earth you heard. Got your baby mama thirst you heard. Feel the flow, nigga, throw it in reverse. This the way you need to surf you heard.